kind of wanted to start. This is for both of you, kind of starting off. Like, what was it about this this character and the, these stories that really kind of caught your attention as creatives? And what has it been like bringing Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur to life like this? Well, on one hand, you got a 13 year old African American girl who's like a super intellect with a great big heart. And then on the other hand, you've got a 50 foot, five ton T Rex. There's a lot you can do with that. <laughs> it's fertile storytelling, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one of, one of the things I love about the series is how it looks. Like, see, the, the sheer design, the way that it, it does that Spider-Verse thing of using the sound effects in, in the animation. It's so pop art comic booky in the kind of way that I love. This is, this is the kind of stuff to put into my veins. Was this always kind of the way that the show was going to look visually? Was there ever any kind of debate on that? What was, it, what was that process like? Oh, no, instantaneously. Uh, when Lawrence and I got together initially to talk about the show and the vision for the show, we shared almost exactly the same influences. Um, and we would we would talk endlessly about comic books, about graffiti art, about Andy Warhol, about Basquiat. And so instead of picking like one element and kind of focusing on that, we decided to put them all together and see what we got from that. Um, I think that's why the show feels so kinetic and has such a kind of high energy component, because it does feel like it's pulling on a lot of different strong influences um, and that also feels very New York to us. New York is very alive. It doesn't feel like it's one particular thing. It's a hundred particular things. So I think that you throw all that together and you get a show that does feel this unique. And that's the thing I love too about it is it's got a lot of really unique flavor. It's got a lot of touches that feel very specific to this story, to these characters in this presentation. But it's still also very much an archetypical superhero story. It's a, it's a, it's got that Spider-Man DNA, so much in it. It's how you do something timeless that's also rooted in its era. That's the Marvel conundrum. Um, Lawrence, I do need to say, Beyonder is perfect. <laughs> like, he's so funny and charming great, and huh? scary. Like, that, and that's kind of the trick to that character. That I feel like I tried to explain to all of my non nerd friends, like, Secret Wars is coming, Beyond it might be in it. Like, here's Beyond it. Well, here's a picture of him. He looks ridiculous. Yeah, he's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's not dangerous. Well, like, he's just <laughs> drawn that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, how much fun is it to kind of step into a character like that who can do just so much? It, it was very scary and and really really fun um, and and you know it was a completely new experience for me. I haven't you know I haven't done a character like this and it was Steve's idea, so he had a lot of fun you know sort of watching me squirm trying to figure out what I was going to come up with. <laughs> he uh, Lawrence crafted. Thank you, Steve. It was it was honestly it was like watching a master class. He crafted and sculpted the role, walked into the booth, looked at the design, looked at the script, and then through the course of whatever, it's trying different voices, different inflections, this, let me pull from this, let me pull from that. And we were just standing by watching it going, this is incredible. And then where it landed was something so unique. And I, I really feel like if we didn't openly say that Lawrence is playing the Beyonder, you wouldn't know because you wouldn't recognize the voice. Oh, it takes you a second. Like I, I, I knew it was coming. It took me a second to be like, "That's that's him, though, right?" Like, oh my god, he's singing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Uh, yeah, that is also it. about all of the time I've got, Lauren, Steve. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to speak with me. This is. I am a fan of both of your work. Lawrence, I've also been, you were technically supposed to be my first interview when I started this job five years ago. So I'm oh, so happy goodness. I'm glad to talk to you. Well, great to meet you, Brandon. Thank you. Awesome.